if you don't get an accurate view of your relationship in Christ and what's on God's mind about children, you're going to lose your kids. Yes, you are. Because they're coming at you from all directions now. Mm -hmm. And without a firm foundation and understanding of who you are in Christ and what God's mind is where your children are concerned, you're subject to sacrifice your children on the altar of the world. Mm -hmm. So many parents are doing it now. And economically, you know, we've been scrapped so long that we'll look for help from any venue in order to make ends meet at the expense of our children raising themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, God is so against poverty for the born again believer. So, you know, we're going to be uh, talking about this and uh, we, we're not going to rush this aspect of it uh -uh. because the next generation is at stake. That's exactly right. There are unborn children that will be directly affected by this that you're uh -huh. carrying around right now. Amen. You men, you, you're carrying the next generation in your loins right now. And they've been targeted by the devil. You see, that's why uh, fornication is, is such a diabolical sin against the body because it spawns bastard children uh -huh. whose rights have been violated by the devil. God still loves the children now, but the parents bring the children forth without a legal premise for the child to grow up and understand what the will of the Lord is. My Lord Jesus. Most bastard children struggle with uh, their relationship with God because the relationship with the parents have suffered so. A child is supposed to get his identity through his parents as to how he's supposed to relate to God. And the, the, the family structure has failed the children. Mm -hmm. Grossly have failed the children. My Lord, that's the truth. And if you're too punked out and too weak-minded to stand up for what is righteous where your children are concerned, don't have babies. Best not to have any children. Because the way this society is going, it's going to force your hand to turn them over to mm -hmm. socialism. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's where this stuff is aiming. That's where it's aiming. Mm -hmm. But God said, no way. He says, I got a plan for the children. So we're going we're gonna to begin to talk about that. Uh, I, I want us to introduce it, and, and let's just talk about some of the parameters, you know, that uh, this whole negative mindset has spawned. You know, because abortion is not new. No, it's not new. And if you turn your Bibles to Exodus chapter 1, let's begin reading at verse 7. Exodus chapter 1, verse 7. And the children, the next generation has always been the target. Always. And we got to understand that all our children are at stake. Well, look, I, I want to I uh, remind the people of this. If, if they can go back in their own relationships, they were the next generation. Mm -hmm. at one point that's right in the past and look how it affected you mm -hmm. now it has escalated now and got a whole lot more sophisticated now because of social media and all the other accesses that the devil has to the children see when, when I was a kid th there weren't, weren't that many uh, accesses to children unless you could get it over an etch -a sketch <laughs> but now they got the cell phones they got the iPads they got everything they got watches they got everything that they can access your children and the, the, our society has received this automation as something cool but it's a diabolical plan of the adversary 
to get your children uh -huh. without your oversight. That's exactly right. Without your oversight. And a lot of parents are so ignorant, it wouldn't make any difference if they were standing right there with the child. They still wouldn't know the difference. So that's why we got to, with the word of God, affect mm. your parental prowess mm -hmm. so that you can begin to stand up and preserve this next generation for the kingdom of God. All right, are you there? And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty and the land was filled with them. Now see, they're in bondage, okay? They're, they're in Egypt and they're in bondage. Now there arose, now uh, a new king, Joseph, have set the standard and you know, he was there and the people, would, and the people worked with the king, but the king that was good, he died. Now there arose a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so get them up out of the land. So in other words, they, they had they had opportunity to establish themselves. They were, they were cultivating the land. Everything was working fine. The Israelites were not, even though they, was, they were workers for the Egyptians, they were not being beaten and mishandled. You understand? But the new king says, we got to do something different about that because it looks like they're growing faster than we having babies. Look at verse 11. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters. See, they didn't have that at first. To afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramesses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with heart bondage and mortar and in bricks. So then they, gave, they just did them dirty. They made them work like a slave. And then the king did something that is happening right now called partial abortion. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shifra and the name of the other Apua. And he said, when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. Now, how are they going to see if it's a son? Partial birth. That means the baby is on his way out. It has broken the crown and the baby head is seen. The partial birth law went into effect in New York this past year where they, when a baby is on his way exiting out of the body, they can stick a needle in the baby's head and suck the brain out and kill that baby right at the door of birth. Who allowed it? Christians. That's right. You see, you see while we are uh, concerned about our own little personal sin, Look at all the neglect, mm -hmm. the sins of omission that we're committing. That's right. By allowing this land. See, God told us to have dominion, take dominion and authority. He told us to police the earth. And there are, are, are certain elements that we won't implement because we're ignorant of the, of the whole gambit of how to put this thing together so that we can have dominion and authority. We're, 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 we're splicing it and we're doing what we feel like doing, but what is necessary, we're omitting to do. And then we're not together on the issues. Amen. That's what denominationalism did. We're not together on the issues, so it's difficult for us to come in agreement. So the power of synergism never is realized in the church unto the world. And not only that, the same principle is seen in, in everything that we do as a church, in our finances, mm -hmm. in our prayer. People don't want to pray. 
You, you call a prayer meeting and you get two or three people. But you call a, 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 banquet. a banquet, the place going to be running over. People love to eat, but they don't like to pray. And we're going to be held accountable for this and the results of this. Because the, uh, I don't know if you finished reading that aspect of it or not. You I got a couple of more verses. All right, but, go ahead. Okay. And, um, but the midwife, look at verse 17. Uh, go back to the end of verse 16, rather. He said, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. See, it's all about getting rid of the, the male kid. The males. So there'll be no male authority in the earth. And be a be bunch no, of young uh, uh, women with no husbands. And they can't reproduce. And they can't reproduce. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men and children alive. See, they'd rather obey God. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have you done this thing and have saved the men and children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered. Before the, it's before the midwives, they said, Before we get there, they already had their baby. And so, <laughs> therefore, God dealt with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. God made them, gave them protection. And Pharaoh charged, now Pharaoh changed his mind. He charged all his people saying, every son that is born, I want you to drown him now. Cast him into the river. Mm -hmm. And that's where we come on the story of Moses. Because right. he came along in this time frame. But abortion is not something new. But we got to stand against it. We can't act like it is uh, just something that's going to be on the book and, and everybody got a right to do it. I, I'm like this. If you want to have an abortion, that's your thing, but pay for it. I shouldn't have to pay for your abortion because you laid down and got pregnant by somebody that you don't want to have a baby by. I shouldn't have to pay for it. I shouldn't have to pay for the kids that you have out of wedlock, law. I shouldn't have to pay for them. Should rise up and go to work. That's right. See, until we, but see, we don't have a clear perspective on that. A lot of Christians feel like, okay, well, see, that's because your poverty mindset is kicking in. That's right. And you think you're hurting the poor. Jesus said you always had the poor with you. You better rise up and become so you can minister to the poor because the only way they're going to stop being poor is if somebody come out of this pot and show them what's right. Amen. But if everybody treat them like they're going to stay poor because they poor and you try not to offend the poor, the poor need to be offended so they can stop being poor. Well, see, you gotta, you got to be in a position yeah. to change the requirements. Yes, you do. And force people into a position where they have to develop in order to experience anything better that's than exactly what they've right. been used to. And that, that's part of the plan that we have, you know, that, that we're building in our infrastructure for this next move of God mm -hmm. through our church. You know, we're going to have upward mobility programs where, where people are going to be forced, if they want to live the good life, they're going to have to get some education. That's exactly right. They're going to have to understand something about finances. They're going to have to understand something about child rearing. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to understand uh, economic laws. They're going to have to know something about politics because we're going to always be uh, bombarded Amen. with the, uh, the ideals that the politicians come up with you know, to run our society. So we got to be yes, a, a, a lot more astute about those kind of issues as well. Instead of, now, I don't have nothing, listen to me now, I'm the pastor of the church, and I don't have nothing against praising God and, and, and just having a good time in the Lord, shouting and singing and all. I don't have nothing against that at all. But that has its place. I'll tell you what you should be doing. You should be doing that at home. Mm -hmm. Just running and shouting and praising God, just having a good time. And then when you come into the congregation of the righteous, it's time to learn something. 
It's time to open up now and Amen. receive revelation knowledge from God so that you can walk out of here and have a right to your praise and worship time because you're walking in victory. Amen. Because you know your rights and privileges. But most people come to church, they want to hear the choir. They want to see the preacher uh, do his cotton mouth. <laughs> and do his uh, the, uh, theatrical delivery. And then when they leave the church, they can't even tell you what the man said. Hmm. Instead of being in a teaching environment like we provide for you all, so that you can walk out of here and say, yeah, now I got that. I can use that against what I'm dealing with in this arena, in that arena. This will work for me. And, and you know, a lot of people are addicted to inspiring messages. Yeah. And, and, and all it is is just an inspirational message. That's it. But you don't know how to take that inspirational message and incorporate it in your everyday living. So you're trying to live off an ins inspirational thing, you know, like um, and because they become cliches if you're not careful. And people learn little catchy phrases, and right. then they're trying to live off a catchy phrase instead of catching this word and getting in this word and living off this word. They're That's trying right. to live off a catchy phrase, and you cannot do it. And you get in a warfare with the enemy, and you're going to die sitting right on the vine. And you got to be open for fresh manna. Yes. Because you can't live off the hamburger you ate last week. Amen. Sure can. You need another hamburger. So you got to be ready to eat every time you come in. And you got to trust the meal that's being prepared for you. Because when my wife and I, when we're praying and we're asking God, you know, show us what our people need mm -hmm. to hear. Show us. He knows who's in the room. Right. <clears throat> and he knows what you need to hear at a specific time in your life. Mm -hmm. So you got to come trusting that you're going to hear from God. The title of the message may not be uh, categorized based on what you're dealing with, but you will hear something in it that you can use in your situation. Amen. Because you're open to receive. That's right. And at this particular juncture in our Christian experience, we got to know that the devil has strategized some things to wipe the church voice out. We can see the, the, uh, the, the, the product of church, I mean, of, of prayer not being in school. You never thought that so many young people would be shot dead every day. Did you hear what I said? Amen. Every day. Because they didn't want them to pray in school. They took away their blanket of protection. And they're even assaulting churches now. You know, that used to be unheard of. But the churches are weak and they, and they have negated the supernatural. And the anointing has lifted off of a lot of these places called churches. Because they're not teaching that word that would bring about a supernatural manifestation of God's presence. They're just trying to get along. They're just trying to get along. They're trying to get an offering. They're trying to stay open. That's all. They're not interested in the development of the people. I'll tell you, man, I wish you could, I wish you could get un, in the undercurrent of a lot of these organizations. Man, it would, it would make you puke. So, you know, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm so grateful for what the direction that God has taken us. And if we can produce one Christian that is succeeding, I give God all the praise. Amen. That's the truth. All the praise. Mm -hmm. look, look at Psalms 127. Because God is big on the next generation. He really is. 
And it's only five verses, so we're just going to read them all. Psalms 127. Except the Lord build a house, they labor in vain to build it. So you can't establish a home without God and succeed in it. That's right. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. So unless the Lord is involved in it, ain't no hope for our city, ain't no hope for our country. If the, if the Christians don't get involved, based on what God needs done. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. He said, you don't have to worry about this stuff. You do what I tell you to do, and I'm going to give you good sleep. Look at this, verse 3. It looks like it was just squares in there, but there is a reason. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord. Oh, Jesus. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. Did you hear that? Yes. So that word heritage means your children that you brought into the world, really they're not yours. We have been called to be stewards over God's property. Because the word heritage means it is property that is passed down through inheritance. Now, now you know what? Now, we could really get deep with that. Oh, yeah. Because the average person that impregnates a woman doesn't have a clue about what you just said. I know it. You see, you got to go all the way back <sighs> to Genesis chapter 1 in order to get the full blown mm -hmm. effect of that scripture right there that she just read. Mm -hmm. Within the man, God put every generation now, I want you to kind of uh, imagine that you and me, we were in Adam. Mm -hmm. God placed us in him. So it took how many generations? I don't know how many generations it took for you to come forth. But you were there. One sperm had a generation, and in that generation, another sperm had another generation, you know, you can just take that thing back so far and you can see how we all evolve. But God knew you were there because he placed you there on purpose in advance. He knew you before you were in your mother's womb. Mm -hmm. And he ordained you. And see, a lot of people never experience their birth ordination. My Lord Jesus. They get born and never find out why. Because they cannot chart back to the purpose for which they came. Because their predecessors don't even know. Because they didn't take time to find out why they came. That is one of the reasons why this business about being parents and raising children is so important to God. If you want to mess up, you have a baby and not seek God about the purpose for that child. Now, now you, you're getting ready to go somewhere to destroy yourself. A lot of people run around and they have hardships financially. They got children, but they got hardships financially and they wonder why. And they blame the child. If I didn't have this extra child, then I'd be able to buy me some rims. <laughs> when you don't have a clue that because you got that extra child, that's the guarantee that you're supposed to be super rich. Because as a steward in, in league with God over My his Lord. heritage, mm -hmm which are the children, God is obligated Come on now. to make sure that you have more than enough. Because a child mm -hmm. and his dreams and aspirations and his capabilities, you were given the stewardship over that, and so you handle the resources to make sure that that child can attain to what God had preordained for him or her to be. But because most parents 
don't think like that, they can't get their hands on the dowry. Mm -hmm. And they struggle, and the child struggles. And it's an endless cycle of poverty. Not realizing that you have a guarantee of great wealth when you got a baby. All you got to do is line that thing up with the plan and purpose of God. And nothing will be denied you. Man, this is serious business. It is. Because he said, he said the fruit of the womb is his reward. So it's his achievement. It's his achievement. I don't know if you caught that. But that's God's achievement. Every time a generation comes into this earth, that's his achievement. That's a testimony to him. It's supposed to, it's supposed to glorify him. It's supposed to bring glory and honor to him. That's right. For every generation that comes. And every family that does not develop that, they are sabotaging the glory of God. As a matter of fact, it's like they have committed some type of uh, treason against the plan and purpose of God because they didn't develop the children or allow them to know God so they could know their divine purpose. And you know, what we want to say tonight as well is that even if you sit in the room and you didn't start out right, go ahead and just jump in the pot with both feet and turn this thing around and make it right. That's and right. depend on God. That's Don't right. keep wallowing in your grief or what you didn't do when your kids were little or when they were nine. Okay, you missed it. Let's get it done because you're still the parent. And I don't care how old your children are, you're still the parent. That's and right. you still have dominion and your words still count they with God. still count. And you can call those things that be not as though they were. Because they steal the seed that came out of you. That's right. And God didn't change his mind no, no, he did not. about their destiny. He did not change his mind. You just got to find out what it is so you can assist him like he ordained you from the beginning. But you know, you got to become so radical about this that people might start calling you crazy. But I don't care. We, we got so radical about our children that we were isolated from a lot of the family things because they thought we had gone into an occult. We, our family said, they're an occult. It just don't make any sense. That's right. But out of, we knew what was on his side of the family, and we knew what was on my side of the family. And we wanted our children to have no parts of any of it. And today we got four grown children. And then we got two that are married and they were virgins when they got married. And we got two that are not married and they're still virgins. That is unheard of in our society. But you know where that come from? That come from putting this word before them every day. And when they made mistakes as kids, we didn't just beat them because we were out frustrated with them. No, we showed them a principle in the word why you getting this beating because this got to help you go further in the things of, right. of God. Yeah. Right. You got you to tell your children why they're getting a the whipping. Yeah. You, you get can. it from them because you, you, you can't beat them and then that could that up. Right. And make just, them irate just beating them just because you're angry. And then just leave them to themselves no, you to gotta, try uh -uh. to figure out. Because the first thing the devil going to tell them, your parents don't like you. So no, that's exactly what he's going to tell them. That's the first thing that's going to happen. You got you to gotta whale them a little bit and then you got to embrace them. And tell them, you know, remind them, I love you. This is why I'm doing this to you. That's exactly right. Because you're destined for greatness in God. That's right. And I'm not going to let you escape. I'm not going to let you off the hook because of a little feeling you got right now. That's or because right. your hormones acting up. No, we're going to get this thing together. And this kind of punishment will prevent you from going to prison. That's exactly right. It'll prevent you from premature death. That's exactly right. You'll be glad that you couldn't sit down for five minutes because your buns was burning. <laughs> when you ride around in your brand new Rolls Royce. Come on now. Living on the mansion on the hill. How many kids were shot? And oh Lord, I, 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 my heart goes out to the parents that lost their children. Yes. But the children in the wrong place, That's right. hanging out with a friend. 
And the parents didn't even know they was over there. Because the parent didn't have the kind of influence exactly in the right. child's life that was ordained for them to have. That's exactly right. See, parenting is an ordination. Yes, it is. It's an ordination that comes with power. Mm. It comes with demonstration. Yes, it does. You have a right to speak and things happen. But you got to know your authority as a parent. And, and you know, and don't, don't be shy when it comes to your, your grown kids. You tell them the truth in their face whether they like it or not. You destined for God, and I'm not putting up with this nonsense. I'm believing, and whatever your hands touch is going to fall apart until you come to God. Amen. See, you can't let them off the hook and then laugh at their little shenanigans. Oh, no. I don't, I don't. You can't play with sin and was, make them feel comfortable. They should be uncomfortable. I was watching this uh, commercial on TV, and, the, and this mother uh, was watching her son break dance. And they were just laughing at him and stuff. And she was in wonderment. Where did he learn that? Mm-hmm. When did he learn it? Yep, that was, I remember that commercial. You know, there must have been a, a, a time and space where she w was not in control of what he was learning. Because she was amazed that, that he had even picked up on that kind of stuff. Because mm -hmm. he looked kind of nerdy, you know. He was only about, what, five? Somewhere like that. Well, he Whatever. might have been a little older than that, but it's just by the mere fact that she could not chart mm -hmm. where he could have been to learn, to learn how to break dance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of times our children get away from us when we don't make it a regiment of interacting with our children to make sure what they're learning and what they're not learning. Amen. Right. And... Uh, a, lot of, a lot of parents let someone other than themselves be the primary influence in their children's life when the child is most vulnerable and impressionable. Mm -hmm. You see, your, your children are like sponges from, yes, from the time that they're born until they're about 10, 11, 12 years old. I mean, you need to be the primary influence in their lives during that time frame. So, you know, it's a, it's a lot to it's this. A lot. And, yeah. and, and, and a lot of parents have neglected to, to do some things and to know some things, but how many of you know that the blood? The blood, thank you for the blood, Lord. The blood of Jesus mm -hmm. is powerful. And the name of Jesus is powerful. And, and, and it still works in the mouth of a committed parent. You can take back your child, I don't care how old they are. Amen. Now, we still pray for all of our children. Mm -hmm. And we call them by name yep. right now. Mm -hmm. And we, we release certain divine attributes into their space Amen. by the spoken word. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we, take, we take precaution that if there's anything that is happening in their lives that does not please God, we take authority over it. Yes, we do. And we bind it and we plead the blood of Jesus over it. And we refuse to just let them live, wake up, run around, do whatever they want to do without being infringed upon by the power. Come on now, the that's the truth. The convicted power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. No, we ain't gonna never let that happen. Mm -mm. So if they decide we're gonna walk in the dark a little bit, they're gonna be in there and they're gonna get in their butt kicked in the dark. Amen. Because we release every day. Every day. Every day. Because it's so easy to drift, you know, in the course of you doing your thing and getting busy and trying to take care of business and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes you get caught up. That's why the power of intercession is so important. My Lord. If it's one thing, if you plan on being a parent, listen to me well. If it's one thing that you need to learn to do as a parent is pray. Amen. You don't want to be deficient in your prayer life. Because mm -mm. a lot is going to be accounted unto you because you are the steward My Lord. over those children. And that's praying in the Holy Ghost. 
90 percent and then you talk english maybe 10 percent yeah you got to affirm and decrease some things that's exactly right because when you pray in the holy ghost you are speaking the will of god in the lives of your children and the devil can't touch it Amen. but if you try to pray a whole lot of english stuff you're going to get messed up in your head the devil going to attack your mind hey, but if you start praying the holy ghost and you get to a certain point the power of God to come in there. I'm going to tell you the truth. He better leave me alone. Amen. I'm in the zone. Don't mess with me. That's right. Don't mess with my children. And I don't care how grown my children are. That's right. Don't mess with my children. They could always be my children. That's right. Because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit growner than them. Amen. And I'm always be a little bit growner than my children. Amen. Now, they can be smarter than me. I don't care. But they can't be growner than me. <laughs> and that's just the way it is. And I'm going to exercise my dominion and authority as the patriarch. Amen. I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And ain't nothing they can do about it. Sure can't. They can't. They can't stop my prayers. <laughs> sure can't. They, they cannot like <laughs> some I do or some I say or whatever, but they can't stop my prayers. Mm -hmm. They can't stop them. They just make it hard for themselves, you know, trying to uh, resist. Mm -hmm. But you can't stop me from praying because I'm praying out of the love I have for them and for the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and the responsibility that he gave me to be steward over them. And if y'all gets real smart, you will say to yourself, to your children, I ain't going to let you mess up my paycheck. <laughs> because see that's why God made Abraham rich he said because I know that you will command your children that was the secret to his great wealth 